So good morning everyone. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Uh, my name is Angela and today I'm going to talk to you about sort of money, schemes to help you save. And this is in the context of black history. Um, when we're doing our black history walks, particularly in areas where um, there are um, people of Black British, Black Caribbean, and some of the difficulties they had, we refer to particular schemes, and one of them is partner. Partner, partner, but put the D in instead of the T, and these partner schemes. And I don't know for many of you, when you hear partner, you're thinking of all those people that say, yes, I'm waiting for my partner. I try my hand and I'm waiting for it, or, you know, looking for the banker because the money is due. And these partner schemes were very much the sort of uh, safety um, net for many people who came to um, Britain um, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, right into the 80s from the Caribbean and needing support. And when they got here, the banks weren't necessarily being very helpful in helping them. So they had to uh, get on and try and find a way to save money to be able to use it for the things that they needed it for. So the partner scheme, partner scheme came from the Caribbean and so it was this fallback position for those who were familiar with it and they joined in. It would be a sort of collective. So you'd have your trusted friends and you would then um, sort of put money in, you know, throw money in and um, wait whether it be every week you'll be putting money in or every fortnight or month. It's up to you as the group as to how you are going to be making these saving contributions. But once you've thrown your money in, you're, look, you're waiting for your hand. You're waiting for the, the money that is due to you. And again, this is outside of the financial regulations that are now in place, but it was their way of making money. You went through to a bank, they're saying no, you have to find another way to do it. So there you are. The partners come together, but you're waiting for somebody who or you're having somebody within that group who is going to be responsible for collecting the money. That's the banker. And that banker would hold on to that money and then distribute it in line in terms of the order, picking order as to who's going to get it next. And so it was a great way of bringing a community together, a group of people together and to support each other. It had its pluses and it had its minuses. So you'd have this arrangement and sometimes, you know, you'd start with good intentions. But for some reason or another, circumstances may change. How is that going to be managed by the group, that partner scheme or the banker, depending on the size of that partner scheme? Where's the banker? I can't find a banker. And you have to worry whether or not the banker has run off with your money. But it was a scheme that many of the people who had come from the Caribbean and through, as I said, the 70s, if they're working in low income positions, you know, you want to be able to supplement your income. And this was a, a safe way of saving. And some people will say, but they could have saved the money, you know, in other ways. But yes, this is about knowing that you didn't just have that five pound and you're going to spend it on something else. You had to put it into the part of the scheme and you had to wait. So one of the qualities you had to have was patience as well as, you know, being able to trust each other. There were no interest rates. So, you know, if you went to the bank and asked for a loan, you'd be paying interest rates. There were no interest rates here at all. But again, talk to your parents. They will have memories of uh, the partner scheme and they'll tell you stories. You know, they are either fun stories or horror stories, but it was a way of helping. It was a common goal to help and save for, um, for that rainy day. And it's again, it was sort of uh, an arrangement. As I said, you needed patience and it was a, a way of supporting each other. But with partner schemes, they started to die off when people were able to have greater access to banks and loans and other savings um, in building societies and credit cards as well, if you really needed to get money. But this is something that people are feeling, should they bring them back the partner schemes? There may still will be partner schemes out there, but people were looking for other alternatives. So credit unions were another way of saving money and they were set up um, in the in the 1960s 
and there was one man who made in his own way he didn't realize it at the day, at that time he was creating black history his name was Reynold Greer now back in the 60s he came from well 1958 he came to Britain age of 22 but during the 60s again um, he was part of a church called the Fern Park Baptist Church in Hornsey and some of his mem members within that congregation went to the banks to try and get some money and were rejected. And it was a British doctor who had actually lived in Jamaica that suggested to them that they should set up a cooperative, a sort of a union, credit union. And he didn't know anything about this, but he set it up and it became the Hornsey Cooperative. And they became the first Brit in, in British history, the first credit union. They pipped another cooperative called the Wimbledon Cooperative to the post by registering. So they became the first credit union um, in British history, but in black history, the first black um, credit union. And so they set up by their first AGM, they had a hundred members hundred members and the credit union started to become very popular amongst Caribbean British um, people here and um, then over the country they decided to come together and form an association which was the Association of British Credit Unions Limited so it became ABCO but this was another way of helping the community to have them make their contributions and to be able to know how that money was being used, you know, to generate um, help for others. And over time, it became, you know, a well-established, um, you know, credit union. And by the time the, the, the Wimbledon Credit Union, which was also um, the second to sort of register, um, um, was um, dissolved in 2005, the Hornsey Cooperative was the oldest surviving credit union in the UK. And as quoted by one of the founder members, you know, this union is a, start, a small start, but the quote is, all right, from small oaks, so I'm sorry, from small acorns grow mighty oaks. And this in itself was very much an oak. But for the church, um, um, the Church of England, they saw that the credit unions were important. And it was through the Archbishop, Archbishop of Canterbury, um, Justin Welby, that he said that they needed to help um, keep these credit unions going and to also help those people who would be drawn to what was a scourge back in the 90s, the payday lenders and, and loan sharks as well, who were charging very high interest and to, to encourage people to look to credit unions. So there is Reynold Greer, the man who made it possible, you know, for many people in the West Indian community the British, black British community, to be encouraged to save and to save in the community sense, you know, for the betterment of the community. And it is very much, um, as the quote from um, the chief executive of the APCO, that, you know, the credit unions is for the people, you know, and for people who want to make a difference. So here we are talking about money, but about helping people as well. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little vignette. Um, just to tell you that I have an Instagram account. Um, so you can find me on Instagram now, Angela Morgan 365 And I've also, out of technical necessity, um, made a YouTube channel for myself now. And that is called The, the Smiling Tourist Guide. So um, if you look there, you'll see some of the videos that I've done. I'm learning every day. I learn something new. And this has been part of another experience for me today, discovering this wonderful gentleman, Reynold Greer. And I'm going to sort of have him in my sort of uh, list of people to, to hail and say, yes, we have some great black British Caribbean people that played their part in our history as well. So until the next time out to the sun, get the vitamin D in and enjoy the rest of your day. So take care. See you soon.